Hey, how you doing? Hey, Officer Stevens, Ernie. Lewis, Lewis. Hey, Lewis. Hey. My partner, Gabe. Hello, sir. How long has she been acting this way? Uh, it's been since Saturday. We, she just believes that I'm having an affair and that I have a woman that I've gotten pregnant in our ceiling, hiding. I'm sorry you're having a bad day. <laughs> it's been past four days. That past four days have been <laughs> bad? Yes, sir. Okay, well, we're, we're here because we don't want you to have any more bad days, right? And we want to get you some help. In the police academy, uh, we had no training on what it was like to deal with somebody that was mentally ill or in a crisis. I was probably the last officer that you wanted to help a loved one that was in a mental health crisis. She's watching us sleep. And I told him, I could be in the living room. I can hear this whole conversation. So you actually hear this I girl talking? I hear both talking. of them. Okay. But now in the mental health unit, every single call we're responding to is a mental health crisis. Uh, I'm not sure. Do you hear her right now as we're talking? He's talking to her. He's talking to her? Because he's actually out if by you the... you want to go to my room, go here. You want me to go to your room? I say because he's going to shut up. Were you hearing? You're hearing it right now? God, I don't he's hear it. He's telling her. I need her here. Okay, I, I don't hear anything. Really I'm so sorry, I don't. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not saying that I don't believe that you don't hear him. I believe that this is very real for you. I just don't hear anything right now. I don't want to go anywhere. I know you don't. You, you're right. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm getting kicked out of my own house because no. somebody don't come out. You're extremely <laughs> agitated right now and stressed out. I'm I'm just broken. I'm shattered. My whole heart is shattered. Okay, you're using words like shattered and broken. Okay, if you were my sister, okay, there's no way I would leave you in this condition. There's no way. Dallas, I wanted to make a word emergency. Yeah, my son needs to be taken to Parker and bipolar schizophrenia. Make sure they train uh, police officers. Okay. Bipolar schizophrenia. What's going on? You drop that for me. Okay, drop that for me, guy. Jay! Drop it! Jay! Drop it! Jay! 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 Why he shot him? More conservative estimates say that those suffering from a mental illness account for almost one quarter of all fatalities involving law enforcement. Get on the ground now! This slide identifies every single officer involved shooting. All of those that are identified in red showed some sign of mental illness. Oh, you can't watch out. Oh, you can't watch out. Is there a crisis in the United States when it comes to mental health issues? Absolutely. People with mental illness are overrepresented in every aspect of the criminal justice system. So I work on a specialized unit that only deals with people in a mental health crisis. Almost everything about how I respond to calls goes against what most would believe. I'm in plain clothes. I drive an unmarked car. My weapon is concealed. And for the last nine years, the only weapon that I've used is my ability to communicate. Are you some kind of like therapist or something? No, I'm, I'm a police officer. Just like, just like him. I don't want to say we do unconventional policing. We just approach certain situations differently. I'm not trash. No. Oh, of course not. No. no. I come from a very nice family. I know you do. You know that you're going to deal with someone in crisis that night. You know that someone's going to need your help. San Antonio police, are you okay? Police have a misconception of mental health. I want the old Chris. Those voices just have total control of him. You don't trust anybody. Mental illness is not unique to the United States of America. What is unique is this dynamic of unarmed citizens being killed by the people who are supposed to protect and serve us. Like, is that the first thing that they think of is to pull their weapon and shoot somebody? No one with mental illness deserves to die because they're already dying inside, suffering. We have to change the way culturally that we look at how we succeed in police work. I have an opportunity every single time I'm called to change somebody's perspective.
There was an incident that happened in Memphis, Tennessee with a young man who was fatally shot during an encounter with police. And he had mental illness. And the department in Memphis realized that there needs to be a program to deal with these type of folks. How to interact with somebody with a mental illness, how to talk to somebody with a mental illness. It prompted police departments across the nation to start to deal with those folks in our community. There are a lot of folks that are locked up in prison that have an uh, underlying mental health issue. Our goal is to try to keep these folks out of jail. What's going on with Christopher today? What, was, what's, what triggered him? Himself, I guess. What's he been diagnosed with? He has um, bipolar disorder. Schizophrenia, bipolar, okay. We got some updates saying that he was asking somebody to shoot him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, who, who is he telling that to? Anybody that wants to do it, probably. I wasn't allowed to cry as a kid, so it came out in rage. Well, here's the thing, Christopher. We got a lot of people out here because they're concerned about some things you said, and that's why we're out here. The truth is, when I got people looking at me and asking me how okay, that doesn't help the situation either. Right, right. That only makes me want it. Do you hit walls when you get upset? Yeah, you yeah. Hit objects? The damage right there. Right there? You did that yeah. today? If a police officer feels that you're an imminent threat to yourself, we can detain you to see a doctor. That's essentially what an emergency detention is. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I'm a straight shooter with you. I think we need to go back to the hospital tonight. Oh, I, no, 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 sir, I don't. I'll give my word. I'm promised. I, I, I don't need it. Trust me, the doctors never help me. They don't do anything for me. It's not an arrest. Even though we put handcuffs on you if we have to, it doesn't go on arrest record. The police report is protected by HIPAA, so you have privacy rights. I feel great. I feel better now. Please, just don't put this on me. Christopher, you made the rest of the no. shoot yourself. Come on, man. Please, 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 please. Don't do this. Don't do this. Come on, man. Please. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go get some shoes for you, okay? I'll be back. Come on, and, and Christopher. Man, I don't go, please. The choice of you deciding if we're going to go or not go, that's been removed. You're going to go. How we leave here is up to you. Where we go is up to you. If you have a facility you'd like to go to, tell me. No psych wards, no necks, no low ridge. Emergency from public hospital. I'm not gonna, uh, I can't, I can't. We're gonna make a phone call and see where we can get you. If you wanna fight and me call more people and we have to carry you out and break half your stuff in the house, then let's do it. I don't wanna do that and you know you don't wanna do that. I don't know if I did anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Express myself. It's just, we don't, we just don't want the wrong response to come out here, man, because yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're punching holes and stuff and, we're just gonna close the door nice and slow, okay? Yes, sir. I think that uh, ended up doing really well. Yeah, that, that did work. That yeah, worked. he went from uh, 100 to zero, not zero to 100. Okay, sir, let's go ahead and walk through this uh, single door over here and then we'll get you right to the ER, okay? Perfect. See, told you, we'll get you to an ER. I get frustrated with the system and the fact that there's just not enough resources for our mental health. And it's frustrating because it's become a police matter. And because it has become a police matter, we're expected to fix the situation. The reality is, we can't fix every situation. From 1955 to 1977, the number of people in state hospitals suffering from mental illness dropped from 75% to 7%. What happened to all those people? Where did they go? I mean, they just didn't disappear. When they were released from the hospitals, they were released to the community. Problem was, there was no groundwork for it. There was no local mental health authority. We moved them from the state hospitals to the penal system, which now became the largest provider of mental health services in the country. Basically, what happened with the institutionalization was the people that were in the hospitals were released into the society and told to fend for yourself. And I hate when they put messages, like little writings and sayings and crap, like on my head, just because they want to play around and make fun of me. They put sensors in me and stuff to make me shake and wobble. Like if I'm wired or something, and I'm not. Here we go. 
the police have come here several times and they know Christopher on a first name basis and they also know me on a first name basis because of the amount of times that they've gone over to the home. She's the one making my life worse and miserable. Her and my grandma, they're the worst people ever. The doctor said I was bipolar depressive and major depressive. They labeled me schizophrenic because of the hearing aids they put in me. And I barely got labeled schizophrenic because of these. I just saw that. That just happened last night. What is that? It's a burn from the lighter. So I don't like him, you know, with matches or with um, any kind of lighters. I want the old Chris. You want the old me? Yeah, the, the one we used to have fun. Chris is a great guy. He is funny. He's, he's generous. And then for him to go through all this, it hurts. You know, these voices just took over his whole life. He don't trust anybody. I see a picture that looks like a man and not my grandma. That's not my grandma. Take off the hair. That's a man. Chris. Chris, I'm wondering, is are you okay that I'm filming you? No, I don't mind. I don't mind. It, it, I, I'll, I'll let you do this. It, it don't bother me because I need to get it off my chest. I asked him if it was, it was okay if I filmed. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, you can film. I need to get this off my chest. Oh, he did? Okay, well then good. Thank you. There's a lot of heartless people here, a lot. Or maybe a lot of people that just aren't educated enough as to the illness. They don't have the medication to calm them down, so they act erratic. And you, you wouldn't know that unless you were told. Like I told him, I said, someone's gonna, you know, hurt you. You know, they might not know that you're, you're not all there and you can get hurt just like that. Uh, Boy, that was in uh, in Houston. They really didn't understand what he was going through. <laughs> you about to get tased. You about to get tired. You got it. Uh-uh, not, not yet. Not yet. You shot that man? Why he shot him? Why he shot him? Why he shot him? Why he shot that man? Cell phone video that surfaced shows Thomas walking towards the deputy with his pants around his ankles. The deputy had ordered Thomas to stop, and when he continued forward, the deputy shot and killed Thomas. It was found that Thomas did not have a weapon. Deputy Brewer was carrying a taser at the time of the shooting, but didn't use it. Any loss of life is always of serious, serious concern. From his immediate actions, it looked like something was going on, some kind of crisis situation was happening at the time with him. Thomas had a history of mental illness. Marquita Thomas says her brother was having trouble dealing with a family tragedy. His wife stands accused of drowning their two children. You could have tased him. You clearly could have tased him. He wasn't trying to hit you. He wasn't trying to shoot you. He wasn't trying to do anything. Danny lived with me here. I got his clothes over there in the bucket. I haven't touched that because how it's folded in there is exactly how he folded it. I wear some of his stuff just to kind of like feel close to him. That day of the shooting, like I was inside Walmart five to 10 minutes away from the location. I just get this phone call, they're like, your brother's in trouble, your brother's going to jail. And I hear these people in the background like screaming and screaming and screaming. And I'm just like, what, it, like, what, like, is it that serious? Like, what's going on? 
And then I get like this real horrible feeling in the pit of my stomach. I just, I just felt like my whole spirit lost my body that day. I just felt so empty and numb, like my whole life changed. We grew up together, we were very close. We kept each other on track for like so long. And I think he kind of like put his feelings aside and his emotions aside to make sure that I was okay. He always wanted to be tough and put on that exterior, like, I'm okay, but he went through a traumatic experience, losing his kids. Deep down inside, like, he was broken. He the first one out of the street. Hi, son. Hi, mom. How was school? Good. I want to tell you about this jacket. It's too hot. Come on, please. Hi, Mila. It's my jacket. That was cool. Since everything happened with his uncle Danny, he's just, you know, his schoolwork has taken a little bit. I think he's trying to still process it. I know. <laughs> this is us, man. <laughs> when you were sitting like that. <laughs> <laughs> Statistics bear out that if you're mentally ill and you're black, that you already have two strikes against you when you encounter law enforcement. Just because you are having a mental ill crisis does not mean you should encounter the death penalty executed by a police officer on a street corner. We will be looking at the training of this deputy as well I just hope and pray that my brother's life is justified and not swept under the rug. Amen. No one with mental illness deserves to die because they're already dying inside, suffering. I'm asking you to please give my brother justice and his children. I would venture to say that at some point, somebody that has a mental health illness has been mistreated by law enforcement. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Yeah, absolutely it is. Our job is to try to change that on our side, okay? Our job is to try to break the stigma, try to teach better skills, try to teach better outcomes. My goal here is that no one in this room ends up as the next viral YouTube sensation. When you go out and you handle a consumer that's in crisis and you talk to them and you de-escalate them and you put them in your car, is that going to end up on YouTube? No. Nobody wants to see that. They want to see those first responders that get out there and yell and scream and go hands on and fight with them. That's what ends up on YouTube. Today we're going to talk about active listening, how that applies to you, what you guys do every day. All of us in here have made a mental health or a mental health disturbance call at some point. Communication is a basic tactical skill in crisis intervention. Crisis intervention training, it trains you to recognize when someone is in crisis. When you recognize there's a mental health component and instead of just grabbing them, tacking to the ground, you're trying to talk to them and get them to get help. My homeroom teacher called y'all, man. Yeah. I'm sorry she wasted y'all's time, man. You know what? I made one silly comment, man, earlier, just kind of, you know, venting, and she took it way too far. Why do you think she called us? A couple weeks ago, man, I uh, slid in a second, shattered my ankle several places. So I just found out today I lost my scholarship. I had a full scholarship to go play ball. I have no backup plan. Like, that was it. Go to college, play ball, go pro. That was it. And all I said was, you know what? I just wish I was dead. You know, like, what's the point of living? I can't play baseball anymore. You're pretty close with the mom? Definitely you telling her that you want to play college ball anymore um, is totally different from her hearing that you that you say you want to kill yourself or end your life or not be here anymore because of that. Okay. I, I guarantee you she doesn't want to hear that, man, okay? Your dreams and everything like that ha have, have not been taken away just because you've, you've broken your ankle. You're she loves you as much. Oh, good job, man. 
<laughs> when we get in a situation where we're suicidal, we get tunnel vision. So all I kept thinking about was my failure. I was thinking about myself. I wasn't even thinking about my mom. So you're giving me options to kind of get me out of that, that phase, man. And you can't tell me what, what's best for me as far as a plan. I, I'm gonna have to figure it out. But like you said, you're giving me some options to start thinking about. So that was good. In order to get anybody to do anything you ask them to do, you gotta build some type of rapport. If it's done properly, it's reassuring, and you're gonna establish uh, an understanding about the person that you're dealing with. I mean, is some, something bothering you at work? I mean, something going on at work? I don't know what you want from me. Um, I didn't do anything wrong. No, you have I cho Can I talk? Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you. You would ask me a question. It was a good question, open-ended question, and I'm giving you an answer. And as I'm talking, you would interrupt me <laughs> to ask me something else and completely throw me off. I know your intention's good. I know that you are, you are trying to get to the bottom of it, but it feels like you're trying to rush to the cause because you want to fix it. There's a difference between when you hear somebody and you're listening to them. Hearing is an action and listening is a process. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sir. Hey, back up, back up. Sir. Hey, you're not the FBI. I called the FBI last Tuesday and they weren't there. You called the FBI, what'd you call the FBI for? I've seen you before. You're part of that red light team back in the 20s. I remember you. So are, are, you, are you hearing somebody talking to you right now? You ever notice that their little focuses when you get that window of like, somebody's paying attention to you, can you say, focus on me, focus on me. Christopher Lopez. CIT is great, it's 40 hours. I think 40 hours of mental health training in a police academy that's seven and a half months long isn't long enough. I think we should do six to eight weeks of training. I think we should spend a vast majority of our time perfecting communication. And then you can spend a little bit of time training them on how to shoot your gun because most officers go their entire career never doing that. Hey, that was a real call that I went on, man. They get interesting. Down, Mike. And, and does he have a mental health diagnosis of any sort, like schizophrenia? He's schizophrenic, uh, bipolar. And is he taking his medications as, as prescribed, or does he no. have access to any? He's not? No, he says he doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. I'm the one that needs meds. I'm the one that needs to go to the doctor. Is he making any any type of suicidal statements or statements to harm other people as well? He's going to take care. He's going to kill, like, all these other people. But we, I don't even know who they are. I don't even know if those people exist. Is he, um, is he hearing voices or seeing things that aren't there, experiencing those type of hallucinations? Yes. He is? Absolutely. Okay. Um, again, my, my name is Trey. Um, so what you're telling me, Chris, is these people are, are beating you up, right? They're, they're putting charges on you. That they're stealing your SIM cards. Uh, how long has this been going on? Over nine years. Nine years. That's that's a lot of stress, man. You look a little tired, Chris. She's stressing me out. Like she yells at my dog. She's on my ass 24/7. Mm -hmm. She is the one that's been doing all this stuff to me. She don't, she's not even supposed to be here. She told me she wasn't my mom. Okay. That she was a cop. So Chris, what, what we'd like to do tonight, Chris, is, is take you- No, I'm not going nowhere. Right. I'm I, gonna be here. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna find a place in the back room, mm -hmm. sleep, get away from her. Mm -hmm. I, I do respect that, you know, you don't wanna go anywhere, but unfortunately, Chris, you know- I, I'm we, not gonna go nowhere. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know this is fake. That's why. I know everything's fake. You're, you're, I'm staying. You yeah. understand that? I know this is fake. So if you're on my property and you're trespassing. You do have a choice in how you go, okay? Or yo. We, uh, we, we don't want to put you in handcuffs. I'm not we, we don't want to. I'm not going. I don't want you to get um, hurt. I don't want to get hurt, okay? If you touch me, that's assault. Okay. Everybody, we have to you go. see this? Come on, Chris. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just, wait, Christopher, just, stop. just relax, man. Just relax. Just relax, man. Relax, relax, relax. Stop. Relax. Just relax, man. Just relax. Just relax. Okay, just relax. What's wrong with you people? What? Stop. Oh, my. Okay. Relax, Chris. What's relax. wrong with you? Listen, I don't want to hurt you, man. Okay? I don't want to hurt well, you. Don't touch me. Police brutality. Okay. We don't want to hurt you, okay? All right. Okay. All right, Chris. Okay. We just want to see you get in front of the doctor, okay? What's your name again, Trey? Yes, Serrano. I want Trey arrested. Watch your step, guys. Get Trey arrested. Get all these cops arrested. We just want to see you get help, man. That's all it was. All right, Chris. 
Let me get Meg come at it, and uh, we'll get him going. See, that's why I do jitsu, man. I don't have to use that much force. Just get him his hands, and that's it. <sighs> Woo. You know, my concern was... He was strong. <laughs> my, my concern was the dog. Officer yeah. William, 1725. Uh, I was calling to see if we could take a patient to the hospital. He is a bit combative, um, having some mental decompensation. I know we had to take him to the ground, but I was just trying not to hurt him, make sure he didn't hurt us. The way, the way that he was uh, speaking, the way you were speaking to him and trying to get get it across to him, and he was just, he just doesn't want to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Usually when he goes to the hospital, he's been like two, four of them already, they release him the following morning. I don't think they'll release him in the morning. <laughs> Even though we took her son to the ground, even though we had to use force to put him into handcuffs and then basically lift him and carry him out of the house, she still thanked me for the way I talked to him. And that is the bread and butter of why we do what we do is because these people are not criminal. They're just, they have an illness. I guarantee you he won't remember us though. No, he, he won't. He was so decompensated. But the family will, for sure. Chris, I, I respect you don't want to be here, man. I, I know you don't want to be no, here. No, if you would have respected me, you would have left me alone. But we're just trying to get you some help, man. No, you're not. No, you're not. For somebody that said, you should have left him there. Why have a conflict and fight him on the ground to get him into the hospital when you could have just left him there? My response is, he's not getting any better. If anything, he's gonna get worse. And when mental illnesses get worse, their delusions get larger and they get more vivid. That is way too much of a potential for other people to get hurt. Let's just relax, Chris, okay? We're, we're almost, we get you in a room and I do. get you settled. Hello. Hello. All right. Hello. All right, Chris, just relax, man. I told you, I've been investigating that. And that's what we're trying to get to. No, that's not the thing. That lady in there, she's been calling the cops because she's in on it. No, family's number. Your family's okay. Your family's okay. Are you going to cooperate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just... You sure? Okay, I'm telling you, your family's okay. Your family's number, right? I don't, I don't have to lie to you. Yeah, you don't have to lie to me. Yeah, you don't have to lie to me. I don't have to lie to you. It's work, work, work to you. All right, Chris. back to the DA's office to see where we're at in the process of the case. I'm hoping they give me some answers and not, you know, yet again, like, we're doing the best that we can. Just don't feel too confident in a lot of things that law enforcement is doing. Uh, officers are protected to the fullest extent by law enforcement. I feel like this guy is still being protected even though he's not employed with law enforcement anymore. Hopefully it's not going to be very long at all. Um, they didn't give me any kind of idea about what to expect. I think they're more just trying to get more information from you guys about Danny, his life, so that way they can tell the grand jurors kind of who this guy was, aside from them just seeing one clip of him out in the street having right. a mental breakdown. I know it's hard for you. I know it's hard for you, Sean, but he thought Uncle Danny was going to harm him. He just mean it. Oh, we know Uncle Danny didn't mean no harm. We know. We know Uncle Danny was not that type of guy. We don't know what was going on with Cameron. Why did he take a broken man's life? 
Right now, my job is to prepare you guys for the world out there because it's not going to be easy for you. And I say you because of the color of your skin. It's, it's, and this is very hurtful for me because my son wanted to be a police officer. Now he says, Mom, I don't want to be that police officer that kills people like they did my Uncle Danny. He said that he don't, he don't want to harm innocent people. You can break down every deadly force encounter in this country with law enforcement. All comes down to, in that moment, that officer was afraid and they reacted. Some overreacted. Am I gonna sit up here and tell you that when you deal with somebody that's in crisis that we're not gonna use force on them, that we can talk everybody down? Absolutely not. Let's be honest. There are some people that we need to go hands-on with. There are some people that need to be tased. And the reality is that, unfortunately, some people need to be shot. All right. Let's go see how you do. A lot of people don't know how police departments are trained. We are trained to shoot to stop the threat. Hey, put the gun down. Put the gun down. Put, put the gun down. down. Put, put it down. down. Put it down. Don't do it. 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 Put it down. Put it down. We're not trained to shoot somebody in the leg. We're not trained to shoot the knife out of your hand. I'm sorry, this is not an episode of TJ Hooker. This is real life. Watch me and everything I do. Hey, put the knife oh, down. I'm sick and tired of you guys. You want to talk to you? Just put the what knife down. Oh, Relax. No, Just put, do. put the knife okay, down. Okay, okay. Put it down. Do whatever you want. I don't like it. I'll do it. Thank you. You know, if you're, if you're not protecting yourself or somebody else, you could be killed that day. But that could go the other way too. Here we go, do it the other way now. What do you think I do? You're not in trouble, I'm put so the knife down. I'm sick and tired of you guys. Put the knife down. What are you gonna do? I don't want any more of your crap. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It seems like a contradiction in a way. Not a contradiction, but like what you have to do on a daily basis. You, on your hip, have the power to end someone's life, mm -hmm. but yet, what you're trying to do is save someone's life. And those are, you know, like, how do you it's... So, uh, I think when I, me walking into a situation, I have the power to, uh, I guess, essentially end someone's life. But I don't see this as something to end somebody's life. I see this as a tool to stop a threat. And I think uh, just from training and constant courses, I always see, I see a firearm as a tool to stop a threat. So I think once it becomes that language, it's not so much that I look at a person, oh, uh, I don't, I, I, want, I, I think I was gonna say, um, uh, yeah. I don't look as a person as a person. I do see them as a person, but I, I, I more so just, I, you know, I, I, uh, I think I just put on my cop hat and see people as, I don't know, I don't know how to answer that. The reality is, is if we wake up, we can't undo what's been done. Law enforcement is very much involved in the front lines of people at their worst in a crisis should the rules of engagement change because someone is mentally ill. Hey, gun, gun, gun. Put the gun down, Marcus. Down. Marcus, put the gun, get the cover and get the cover. Back off! Yeah, all right. We will. Just put the gun down. Put the gun down, we'll talk to you. If I had a family member that was going through a mental breakdown, I would not call the police. I would not. It would talk to you better if you put the gun down. All right? Let's just talk about this for a second. You're all right. We're okay. Knowing what I know now, why would you when you know what they're capable of doing? It's okay, Marcus. I want to help you, Marcus. Just put the gun down. Let's help you.
Why do we have a crisis with mental health? It's money like everything else. Texas is 48th in the nation when it comes to mental health spending. If you have an unfunded patient with no insurance, who pays for that? You can't expect the private agencies to pay for it without support and still survive. Because there's a lot of people with mental illness with no insurance. But let's be honest, that takes money. There's got to be money available. Spending for mental health services has continually been cut. These are all the different things that have led up to why we're seeing an increase in the number of calls we get. Why we're dealing with people with mental crisis. Hey brother, uh, this is the uh, Sarek Bolo that went out uh, for the guy that threatened to shoot police officers. I've got a couple of officers coming with me, plain clothes. All right, so the backstory on this guy is, he posted a bunch of stuff on Facebook. This post right here, I was just thinking, you know, if I was willing to kill a cop today, you know, what's gonna happen? He posted a picture of himself holding a gun with his birthday and then his RIP, rest in peace date, of it being 2018. Okay. okay. We'll approach him. I'll tell him to keep his, just his hands up. And once he's clear, then we're going to just build rapport with him. If he has a weapon inside the apartment, we're going to go ahead and do a seizure on that weapon. His mom informed us that he has bipolar disorder and that really he just needs help. I just hope he's remained calm. There he is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So he's got his hands in front of him. We're good. Hey, Larry, I'm the one you talked to on the phone, me and, me and my partner, Gabe, okay? Hey, Larry, I'm Gabe. Okay, no, no weapons on you right now? No, no, sir, you can okay. you mind if we check? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Okay, just a phone. Your mental health, where have you received treatment in the past? Nowhere. Nowhere? Uh, because your mom said that was part of the struggle, is that you're having difficulty in seeing a doctor. Because money is an issue and all that. I, I, I hate this, I hate this so much. Okay. I, I, I didn't pay. I, I, well, I, I cut myself off. I myself. Well, what we saw was the threats were really a cry for help. I mean, that's what that was. That was you asking for help. How, how long have you been feeling like this? Probably since the age of 13. Okay. Childhood trauma? Yeah. <laughs> Your mom told us a little bit. Okay. That's a lot to deal with, man. Unresolved trauma? It, it's a beast, man. We actually have clinicians and therapists that work directly with our unit. So it's very easy for us to get you to see a doctor, okay? Okay, this is no different from you going to the doctor and saying, hey, I got a sore throat. All we're saying is, hey, I'm having some sore thoughts right now and I need help with that, okay? It's the same thing. I'm glad that we got to intervene before you know, this became serious. You yeah, know. you know what, um, I need help, man. I really do. Because we want to help you, man. I mean, it, it, I don't want you feeling like this. We're going to call MedCom, find out where we're going to take him, and then we'll go from there. You look at Parkland over in uh, Florida, FBI had information. Facebook posts. You know, Facebook posts that, that, that this kid had made, these threats. Thank goodness that there's a program like this in place where somebody captured what he said and didn't just say, oh my goodness, threat, look out, send a SWAT team in to get this guy. It's, hey, there's some mental health issues. Let's send mental health and offer services to him because he's gonna get a lot better services going to mental health than going to jail. Officers advised me when they left here that they were going to take him to the mental health unit to get evaluated and that he would get the assistance that he needed. The following morning, the nurse contacted me and said that he had told her he was not ill, he didn't need any medication, and he refused services, and he was ready to go home. 
I asked her, you know, isn't there anything you can do, you know, to keep him, you know, to make sure he gets some kind of uh, medical assistance, some kind of medication to calm him down to, you know, get, make the voices go away. And she says, no, as long as he refuses services, they can't help him. And so he walked out of there and walked home. Love, this is a picture I love of Chris. Wait, where is it? That's how Chris looked. Oh wow, he's a lot thinner now. Yeah, yeah it's taken a toll on him. Yeah, he's changed a lot. Look at that smile on his face. That's my sweatshirt. That's a different man. Who's that? That's supposed to be me, but that's not me. This picture was taken here, God, maybe a few years ago. I never noticed any signs of the uh, bipolar schizophrenic until maybe about five, six years ago. I know these people, these faces aren't my family or my sister, but these faces are the faces of the dead because there's always something hidden in the background. Everything reminds me of him because I honestly didn't see my life without him. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Chris. Happy birthday to you. So, Chris, right now we're making a documentary. Okay. You know that, right? Yes. Yes, sir. You remember when we talked about this? Yeah. yeah okay I didn't send the papers. Yeah. Okay. And you're okay with us? Nope. Right now, I'm okay with you filming this. Yeah. Because this, this is a lot to get off my chest. I think police have a misconception of mental health. Police don't understand people with a mental illness because they see a conception of somebody that is a threat to them. That's bullshit, I ain't do shit. My thing is, when they arrested me, they used too much force. Get your hands on my pockets. We just gotta search you before you get no, in the police okay? No, it's fake. It's all fake. Look, if somebody's calm and collective and telling you to get the hell out of my house because you don't really belong here at all, don't come at them roughly. We just want to get you in front of a doctor, okay, Chris? I'm fine. I don't need a doctor. I need people to stop fucking with me. Try and soothe them down in order to figure out what's wrong with them. If he starts agitating or angry, you just calm down and just, okay, well, maybe we could talk it out. Is there something bothering you we could talk about? I didn't need help. I needed them to stop bugging me. Come together for the answer today. And Jesus, in name pray. Amen. Amen. It's a shame that it has to be that way. But before I go to work, it's like it's like a lot of wood in the area. And I was just thinking to myself, what would I do if I got pulled over by a post officer in this area? No, would I just keep driving? You know, we should pull over and stop there, no houses or nothing. How do I forgive this officer for taking my brother? Because I know my brother was going through something and I know it wasn't his fault. And when people say, right like, you're going to be all right, you're going to be all right, like, I'm never going to be all right for a long time because I don't feel a connection with nobody like I did with Danny. I want somebody to reach out to me like, hey, are you okay? Like, do you need me? Like, do you need to talk to me? Like, whatever. I don't get that, man. I just, I just feel so alone, man. Like, it's so hard. You, you're a leader. You have been given a lot. And when I say that, I mean knowledge and wisdom. So there will always be much more expected of you, more than you even want to give. Now that's not to say you won't get tired, but Marquita, get your second win.
Dust yourself off, baby, and get up and go again. It has not been in vain, Marquita. I promise you, it has not been in vain. Like in a black community, some of us feel like we don't need help to cope with what we know we need help with because we don't want people to presume like we're crazy or like we're less than human. That's gonna take a toll on you mentally. Turn it sideways. Get fired. Ooh, I don't see never go deep in that one. <laughs> if I show you a sign of weakness, then you would think I'm weak. It's, it's like a revolving door. And we don't want that door no more. We don't want that cycle. We don't. A uh, mental health call came in. The Navy Department is calling in on a welfare check on a 29-year-old who is messaging other sailors that he's thinking of hurting himself and ending it all, thinks that there may be weapons in the house. The last message they got was about an hour ago from him. I don't have much details about what happened. Just that you sent some text messages out that were concerning. Can you talk to me about that? It's not a good time of year. Like, I lost my mom on my last deployment in 2015. I'm sorry. And uh, I wasn't able to say goodbye or anything like that. So, I'm like, I'm a combat vet. There was like zero decompression time from Afghanistan through another deployment and then getting home. Ever since my mom died, I've always, you know, been like, you know what, I don't really want to be here anymore. I've been working through it and the fact that he you know, reached out to people was a huge step for me. And, you know, I told people in the text message, like, you know, I might not come back. What do you mean by like, I might not like, come back? I might, you know, you know, consider hurting myself or killing myself while I was out here. Like I discussed with her before I came out here, and it was just something on my mind and stuff like that, and nothing real. Like, hey, how are you gonna do it? Like, let's go buy a gun and put it in. Nothing like that. So no plan. No. Just no. thoughts, fleeting yeah. thoughts. Yeah. So just. Um, okay. Just I appreciate I, you being being honest. Okay. Do you have concerns right now, Christopher? Yes. Okay. What? What are your concerns? And I just worry that one day he's not just going to be upset and he's going to do something. And I'm are you worried that he's in that state of mind right now? I didn't know how bad work had gotten. He had closed me out to that. Have you ever been diagnosed with depression, PTSD? Um, just PTSD. I have super vivid nightmares. Yeah. And I've lost four. I think, no, it's five. Five of my Marines five. and the last calendar year to suicide. Okay. And then one of my buddies that I went to Afghanistan with and his wife just out of the blue killed herself. That's 22 a day, you know that, right? Yeah. 22 veterans a day, and I don't want you to be a statistic, yeah. man. I, I do not want that. Yeah. Right. I want to, I want to make the right choice, you know. Right. I want us to make the right choice mm -hmm. for you right. and your well-being, mm -hmm. okay? So I gotta know 100%, you know, are you thinking of suicide today? No? no. Will you call me if things change? I will. You promise? Mm-hmm. All right. I just want to make sure that you're not going to be overwhelmed. Do you feel comfortable in this situation right now? I'm not afraid to call sure if I need to. You know, you've seen your fair share of trauma, for sure, being a corpsman. We get asked that all the time, you know, is who checks on you guys? No. Well, I mean, we kind of check each other. I mean, right. It's enough. It's enough? 
You really need to stop. No, no, no. I want to know the answers. I'm tired of both of you. That's I tell the truth all the time. No, you don't. That's enough. Really? I'm sorry. Did you yell at me in the car? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, hell yeah, you did. Hell yeah, I did. And I was calm as You fucking want to be bitch. Excuse Whatever. you? Yes. You know what? You need to stop right now. You know what? I'm going to walk outside and watch you get arrested later. Go walk outside so we can okay. call the police on you. Okay, go on. You know what? You need to stay the fuck away from me. Well, then leave, Christopher. No, you leave my house. That's Excuse enough. Me, sir. Let's walk outside real quick so this bitch can get arrested real quick for fucking tampering with my shit and with my investigation, which I don't seem to understand because she's stealing all my fucking money. I couldn't see you. Or they're giving me glass in my food and shit. Or which one do you poison my dogs? Tell me that. What's your biggest fear? That that um that he hurts that he uh, hurts someone. I really don't like to think about it. Think about it. I mean, I even kept things from my kids that they don't know about that he did to me because I didn't want them to hate him for something that he didn't have control of. Once, he said the voices told him something, I don't know. Well, I had a different necklace and he got my necklace and he was choking me. And I had the marks. I called Martha and I told her, I go, please come. I go, he, he choked me and I'm scared. And I'm, I was never scared of him until that time. And so she ended up calling the police. But I didn't let the cops see my neck. I, had, I put on my hoodie. I covered my, myself. Now, I'm not a violent man towards anybody. Unless it's self-defense. So we've spent two nights now going back with Chris. Uh-huh. How's he doing? Not good. And I'm pretty sure the night after you guys were there, he was, like, released the next morning. Holy moly. I can't believe they released him that quickly. Do you tell me this person saved after one day to go back to his mom after he's already believing his mom is not his mom? And, and her she, mom is dead. And his mom is dead and they, this person's a threat to him and he may harm? That's crazy. Now, here's the thing. What if he did go home that night and killed his mom? Who's responsible for that? The hospital. That's where they fail people. We do an efficient job for what we have to get them to the hospital. But you know, we're, we're not treatment facilities, we're a police department. And he's still not well. He needs extended treatment. He needs some kind of follow-up care or inpatient care. Now he's back out and, and still really, really decompensated. Now you're gonna put more officers, you know, in danger because this person doesn't know what their actions can potentially do. So the call we're going to, a uh, lady's calling, saying she's having thoughts to kill her mother's dog. This has been going on for six months. She's diagnosed with PTSD and bipolar and she is taking medication daily and she'll be waiting at the door for officers when they get there, no weapons. You did the right thing by calling us tonight. You know, that's the first step, you know. Yeah, you get little hiccups even though you think you're cured, you never are. They've been ran around so much through the system, sadly. Put through the system, what do you mean by that? My mother has helped me to try to stay in, but they just let you go. I've been ignored, like I said, so many times. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. So you've been ignored more than you'd like to? Oh yeah, I've been even threatened. Either you take your medications or you're gonna get shot up with the needle. A doctor even told me and looked in my face, told me, just take what you're supposed to and then you'll get out. At one point I had about $2,000 worth the medications and I only made like 600 a month. Oh, so. The mental hospitals, why aren't they doing their job? They have one job and that's to stabilize patients. We have like eight jobs. CIT is fantastic, but it's one cog of the wheel, right? 
If I have a person who's in crisis out there on the street and I go out there and I de-escalate them and I don't use force and then I take them to whatever facility throughout the city, the sad reality is 100% of how that person's treated is dependent on who that person is and what insurance they have. If they're indigent and they don't have any insurance and they have no capacity to pay that bill at all, they're gonna be stabilized very, very quickly and they're gonna get released. And then they're usually gonna go back to the same situation. Now you're gonna have that same officer dealing with them again two days later. We don't have enough resources in Bear County for the amount of problem that's out there, not even close. These people are gonna come out at some point and the reality is that they don't have good paying jobs, that they don't have insurance. How are they gonna afford medications? follow-up services. You're dealing with somebody who doesn't have transportation, doesn't have a good paying job or a job at all. These are the expectations that we have to th think about outside of the mental health facility. He has to sign a release in order for me to get any kind of information. He never signs anything. He never wants anyone to know what meds he's taking or where he has to go or what appointments. They want me to be mentally incompetent. That's the whole thing. They want me to be mentally incompetent in order for my mom to have cosign of everything to get what they want. You take your medicine, Mijo. Take your medicine you. so you can sleep tonight. Yes, Grandma. They switched her. Damn it. They switched her out. I guess he switched different memories on it. And I feel very sad to see him in this condition. Very sad. I pray for him on a daily basis. And I pray that he gets well. Sometimes I just wish it was just like a nightmare. I just wish I could just wake up and he'd be back to the way he was. Even without me, I wouldn't care. As long as I know he was better, I'd be happy. So all I can do is just watch him waste away. I know a lot of people say, well, he's 35, let him go, let him figure it out himself. But put yourself in my shoes. If it was your child, what would you do? I mean, I know you. a lot of people say tough love, but this is a disease. This is not, you know, because they're being resentful they're not cognizant of what they're doing, so you can't say tough love. Today, the 176th Grand Jury of Harris County indicted former Deputy Cameron Brewer for the fatal shooting of Danny Thomas, an unarmed civilian. Brewer now faces five to 99 years or up to life in prison as a result of this charge. Anytime a life is lost, it's important to us at the Harris County District Attorney's Office. But when it happens at the hand of a government official in a free country, it creates even greater concern and emotion among family members and the rest of the community. He was fired from the Harris County Sheriff's Office for failing to apply the training that he had been provided using less than deadly force against somebody who was clearly unarmed. When the government takes a life, it matters how we respond. We responded by presenting all the evidence to a grand jury and they responded with the true bill. And we're gonna prosecute. Thank you all. I can't even stand like standing here right now. We just pray to God, the cop that shot Uncle Danny that he's brought to justice, right? Will he go to hell too? Will Cameron go to hell? What What do you think? Maybe he killed Uncle Daniel accident. Maybe he didn't know, he just thought he was gonna hurt him. 
maybe uh, he deserves a second chance to change his life and do better. Hmm. Like an eleven year old who who doesn't understand death and why people kill other people, but is so fast and willing to forgive is mind blowing because I'm not ready to forgive, but my son is so ready to forgive. You gotta go that way. Oh, you got skills now. <laughs> go long, Sean. Maybe this is my calling. Maybe this is God's bittersweet way of telling me, like, hey, this is what I think you should be doing. Go! Being a voice for somebody else that feels like their voice isn't strong enough. I think the public misunderstands mental illness as disease you can contact and touch and it'll just go at you. No, you have to get to know them. You don't feel the emotions that they went through. Then you shouldn't be judging another person. You don't lower each other. I love you. I love you. This is my grandma. This is my grandma. This is my real grandma. Yeah. We got to get away from that stigma. Having a mental illness does not mean that we can't function in society. It does not mean that we're crazy. People with mental illness are more likely to be victims of crime than to actually be the ones to commit it. Is the system perfect? By all means, no, it's not. Hey, buddy. What's that, a toy? No, wow. The only thing I can do every day is go out there and do the best job that I can and remember I serve a public, I serve people. Matt, Sat, Sam, Sat. All right, good job, you're getting it. Never get to a point where you become cynical because it's easy to do that. Hi, mama. <laughs> I love you too, big guy. We all love you. We were never meant to do this, but we are. And we have been for years, and we're going to be probably forever. Stop complaining about it, wake up, and let's just give us the tools and resources that we need. Say stop, police. <laughs> police. <laughs> stop resisting. The bar that we have in police work is just stay alive. That's the most important thing. Go home at the end of the day. Like, yeah, but that's also a pretty low bar. We need to raise the bar of what our expectations are. Love you guys. I feel good, like, actually, like, stating my peace, kind of, you know? You kind of, like, get that sense of, like, relief. It's been a good day. Thank you.